Time for our frozen embryo transfer. We have been, we, me, we, have been preparing it for it for about a month and we are five days out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like I just got so nervous. PIO shot number one of hopefully so many. It's transfer day. Let's have this baby. Or two. Hey guys, welcome back to my shit show, aka my channel. Um, so I've been in my on YouTube for a hot minute and the title says it all. So as you guys know, or if you don't, we've been trying to have a baby for a long ass time. Like we're going on four years. And earlier this year we did IVF and we did you know, egg retrieval, everything went really great except for the whole OHSS thing but like we got good amount of eggs good amount of embryos from that um and yeah um we couldn't do a fresh transfer because uh, I overstimulated so I had to have some recovery time so with that um my husband and I made the decision to go forward with our frozen embryo transfer privately um yeah it is a decision we made because of our history with miscarriage. We were very apprehensive to take this many people along with us in real time. I know there's plenty of other YouTubers with way more subscribers that do it. Props to them. We were trying to guard our hearts a little bit. Just, you know, in case it happened again. And it happened again. So... We had our frozen embryo transfer in July. We transferred two kick-ass quality embryos. And it was an amazing day. Very, very good day. Um, four days post-transfer, <laughs> I started testing because I couldn't wait. Um, and four days post-transfer, we got a positive pregnancy test. Um, don't have footage of that. Don't have footage of a lot of this first trimester. I'll sprinkle in a little bit of here and there what I have because I felt so guarded and so nervous because our last pregnancy ended in a missed miscarriage. I went in for my 10 week ultrasound. And the baby had passed away and I was petrified. That was gonna happen again. So now I'm here to tell you my worst nightmare came true. It happened again. Went in for my first ultrasound with my OB. I had already had two previous ultrasounds with my fertility doctor. We had one about six and a half weeks and one at about eight and a half weeks. Baby looked great both times. By the way, we only had one baby. Um, even though I transferred two embryos, one stuck. There's my little babies. Let's go see if both of you are there. And if you're big, or bigger, obviously you'd be bigger than this now. Meh. Yeah, I'm that extra. Um, we saw their heartbeat, they were wiggling around, especially at the eight week ultrasound. Like they looked like a perfect little gummy bear and were so cute. And um, we graduated from my fertility clinic and like they're like, you know, the statistics are there. Well, if you see a heartbeat after eight weeks, like the, the chance of miscarriage is like less than 2%. So I'm like, all right, 
let's just get through this first trimester. Let's just make sure before we say anything to anybody. Granted, a few family friend, friend, few family people knew, a couple friends knew, um, but that was it. And we were just like soaking it up, enjoying it. I was super sick, vomiting, and it was like so reassuring to think everything was fine. Um, I had had a little baby bump. It was adorable. Um, and then it all went away. We went in for my first appointment with my OB and we had originally, it's just supposed to be an appointment with the OB coordinator and an ultrasound was not going to happen that day, but I the person that I am called back and was like I would feel much more at ease if we did an ultrasound just to make sure with my history of loss I I need to see that we're doing okay so and for the ultrasound and it was like slow motion we're cracking jokes with the ultrasound tech before we had started and she's like this is an IVF baby and I was like yeah and she's like how many are in there I was like just one we transferred two and we were like cracking up just making jokes and then I've had enough ultrasounds to know that ultrasound techs aren't supposed to get quiet so look at the screen and it was the same as last time No heartbeat. Baby was just motionless and not there anymore. She didn't even have to say it before I knew because I I had seen this before. I knew. But then she said the words. I'm not finding a heartbeat. And then she asked if she wanted to, wanted me to do an internal scan just to be sure. So I said yes. I told me I ripped my pants off faster in my life. And did all that. Same thing. I opted for a DNC. It was recommended based on the size of the baby um, and all that. Um, we did a DNC not only because of that, but... Um, I feel like I went into like I gotta fix it mode so I was like let chromosomally test this baby like figure it out what's wrong with him or her I need to know and all that so went in for my DNC all went well and um, yeah it was over just like that I'm like having the most horrible hormonal crash because I was on so many medications to try to prevent miscarriage. I was on Prometrium twice a day, progesterone and oil injections, um, estradiol pills, estrogen patches, baby aspirin, dexamethasone. I was on everything you can imagine to prevent this from happening. Especially because it was an IVF baby. Um, you know, those precautions are taken. People are so uncomfortable with this kind of grief because nobody knows what to say. And I get that. I don't know what to say. And I'm sure there's people out there that are thinking horrible things about us. Like, hopefully those that couple throws in the towel and hopefully they just stop because it's clearly not working or it's not in the cards for them. All those other things that people tend to think. And yeah, we put our infertility journey out there for the world to see, but it's no one's place to try to tell us how to do this. We're devastated and I feel very numb to all of it. I don't know. I don't know what comes next. I have ideas. I have thoughts of things I'd like to do. We wanted to be parents four years ago. And there is just no hope in sight right now. 
just want to say thank you to everyone that has reached out whether that's through a text or a message or email or whatever um we're grateful for the kind words and prayers um that we've received um don't take it personally if i haven't responded though um don't really know what to say so anyways uh I wish I could have been uploading a pregnancy announcement video instead of this, but um, this is real life, no cookie cutter shit here, I'm always going to keep it real, so thank you guys for your constant love and your support, um, and we're going to keep chugging along, <laughs> and um, you guys along on this what do you even call this a journey it's a situation whatever anyways i'll see you guys in the next one